<laughs> All right. If you were told to solve this triangle, what's the first step you would do? I, personally, would write the numbers in. 107.5. C is 36. Alpha is 33.5. And we should find beta first. Find the missing angle. How do we find the missing angle? 180 minus 107.5 minus 33.5. So it's what? 39? Yeah. Now, do we have opposites? Yes. Since we have opposites, we use the law of signs. The sine of 107.5 over 36 equals the sine of 33.5 over A. This times this divided by this. The easiest one we can do. Okay? So what does A end up to be? Twenty point eight. I'm good with that. And then we do the same exact thing. Sine of one hundred seven point five over thirty six equals, and then we go the sine of thirty nine over B. So thirty six times sine of thirty nine divided by sine of one hundred seven point five. Twenty three point eight. Okay, we good? Okay. Oh, goody. We have the three triangles one. Or three triangles, two triangles one. An acute triangle, an obtuse triangle. Should I label them alpha, beta, gamma right away? No, do not label them yet. Beta is going to be over here, 38.5, which puts B on its opposite side, 30.5, which puts A over here, 39.1. So 38.5, 39.1, 30 30.5. Okay, from there. We want to figure out what alpha is first. Because alpha is opposite of A, gamma, then will be up here. Okay. So to figure out alpha, the sine of 38.5 over its opposite side, 30.5, equals the sine of alpha over 39.1. So we take 39.1 times the sine of 38.5, divided by 30.5, and then do second sine, second answer, because when you're looking for an angle, you have to use the inverse sine. Okay. 52.9. So if alpha is 52.9, then we take 180... Minus 52.9 to find the alpha here. So 180 minus 52.9 is 127.1. And then to find gamma, it's 180 minus 52.9 minus um, 38.5 on this side. So that would be 80 something. Or is it? 88.6. And over here, we take 180 
So for gamma, we take 180 minus 38.5 minus 127.1. 14.4. Okay. Now we have to just find what side C is for each of these. So over here, the sine of 88.6 over its opposite side C equals what we started with, the sine of 38.5 over 30.5. So 30.5 times the sine of 88.6 divided by the sine of 38.5, what do we get? So the top line, alpha is 52.9. Gamma is 88.6, and C is 49.0. Over here, we do the same thing, but it's with the sine of 14.4. So 30.5 times the sine of 14.4 divided by the sine of 38.5, C equals 12.2. Okay. So you've done enough of those problems. You should have a good idea of how to do that by now. Okay. Do you draw two triangles right at the start of this one? No, you don't need to. Why? Because you have the obtuse angle given to you. So when it's obtuse given to you right at the start, you got 138.5 here. That's gamma. C is 8.1. If alpha is here, A is 9.2. Um, beta is up here. How do we start this? So if you take 9.2 times the sine of 138.5 divided by 8.1, what do you get? And then you have to go inverse sine of the answer. Do it again. 9.2 times the sine of 138.5 divided by 8.1. What's 48.8 plus 138.5? plus 138.5 is 187.3, so there's not enough for B. So now. I thought this wouldn't even make an angle here because when I looked at this, I saw, oh, 8.1 is opposite the biggest and 9.2 is over here. 9.2 has to be opposite the biggest. So I knew before we even did any calculations, this wasn't going to work. Okay. Now, don't just assume that on the test, this will be, oh, this doesn't work. Okay, make sure it doesn't work.
because Mr. Beerspot could be a rat fiend and have changed up the test from the sample test. So. Lunar crater problem. Set it up like this, please. Please, 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 please. Make angle A an obtuse angle because BAC, BAC is 110. So if you go AB top to bottom, then C has to be up here to create an obtuse angle. Okay, please set it up like that. So 110 is here. Okay. So if that's 110, um, C is 58 meters from A, ACB is 41. We don't have, and if we put X right there, we have an opposite of that, sine of 41 over X, but we don't have an opposite anywhere else. So how do we create an opposite? Take 180 minus 110, which is 70. 70 minus 41 is 29. So it's a sine of 29 over 58. Cross multiply and solve. This times this divided by this. You need to round to the nearest hundredth. Make sure you read the directions on the test. 78.49. Okay. If we have side, side, side. What method do we use? Law of cosines. If we want to find alpha first, we go... A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2B C cosine of alpha. Then we do the math. Oh, I bet this won't work. I had to restart my computer. That's the one. Um. Okay. So what I would do is I would take 23.2 and square it. Subtract 14.5 and square it and subtract 14.6 and square it and I'd get 114.83 equals 14.6. and I would take negative 2 times 14.5 times 14.6 And that's negative 423.4 cosine of alpha. Divide by negative 423.4 cosine of alpha equals this number divided by this number.
and then do inverse cosine of the answer equals. Uh oh. Oh, we want degrees. Inverse. Actually, inverse cosine of this number right here. 105.7. Does that sound appropriate for this problem? Yes or no? It's appropriate because we know it's going to be the biggest angle because it's opposite the longest side. Okay? So then we can just use law of sines to figure out a remaining side. The sine of 105.7 over its opposite side, 23.2, equals the sine of 14 point, of beta over And then go inverse sine of the answer. And you get 36.98 or 37.0. So 105.7, 37.0. And then what are we left with? That's 142.7. So 37.3. Which would make sense because 14.6 is slightly larger than 14.5. And there we go. What method do I use here? Well, I don't have my, any opposites, do I? So law of cosines. So b squared equals 7 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 7 times 8 cosine of 98.9. Now, what's nice about this problem is you can put this straight into your calculator just the way it is. So, b squared equals 7 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 7 times 8 cosine of 98.9. So, this side is 130. That's 130 is what b squared is. You have to go second square root of the answer. And it's 11.4. And then you can use law of sines to figure out the other side. So sine of 98.9 over 11.4 equals the sine of alpha over 7. So, 7 times the sine of 98.9 divided by this number up here. Why am I dividing by that number up here instead of just typing in 11.4? Because the rounding can throw my answer off, right? So it's better to use the number from the calculator with all these decimals than um, to use a rounded answer. So I get 0.6. Well, that's not the angle. 
Well, I have to go second, sine, second, answer. And then I get 37.3. Then just take 180 minus 98.9 minus 37.3. And you get 43.8. And all the angles line up with the sides correctly. Longest side, biggest angle. Second longest side, second biggest angle. Shortest side, smallest angle. Okay? So they line up appropriately. Use Heron's formula. Find the area of the triangle. Heron's formula. S equals A plus B plus C divided by 2 13.7 exactly okay so then the area equals the square root of 13.7 times 13.7 minus 5.1 which is 8.6 13.7 minus 9.7 which is 4 and then 13.7 minus 12.6 which is 1.1 so if we take the square root of all these multiplied together, we get the area, which is what? 22.8. When you find the area of a triangle, they give you this. This is the time where you can, yep, go ahead and label before you start. So I get 47.8, 60.6. And then 14.5, do we have enough to do it? Enough information just to put in the formula? No, we do not. Okay, so, but I do have enough information to create opposites here. This is 108.4, so that means I have 71.6 for this. And I go the sine of 71.6. Over its opposite side, 14.5 equals the sine. And it really doesn't matter which one I use here. Um, I'll use 60.6 over B. Cross multiply and solve. So take 14.5 times the sine of 60.6. Press equals. Divided by sine of 71.6. Press equals. Do the inverse sine of the answer. What do we get for B? Should be something around 12-ish. 13.4. Sounds good to me. 13.3. And now I have side angle side. And since I have side angle side, I go the area is one half of 13.3 um, times 14.5. Times the sine, not the cosine, the sine of 47.8. Do the math. And I get 71.4. Okay. You've already taken a quiz over this. You had extra homework over this stuff. So the first eight problems, I'm trying to beat you to death on that. Then the last ones were the ones we just got done with last time. The vectors. Okay. So, vector A has a component form of 0, 3. Vector B has a component form of 5, 0. A plus B would have a component form of 5, 3. A minus B would have a component form of negative 5, 3. Okay? So, A plus B would be 5, 3. That would be this one. A minus B would be negative 5, 3, which would be this one. Here, A has a component form of 1, 4. B has a component form of 6, 1. So A plus B would have a component form of 7, 5. And A minus B would have a component form of negative 5, 3.
So 1, 4, looking at this graph, would be this. No, what am I doing? I want 7, 5. 7, 5. Hmm. I'm thinking it's this one. And... I wonder if it's some, I wonder if this is one five. One, two, three, four. Oh, this is one five. I made a mistake. So this would be seven six. And five, negative five, four. So negative five and up four would be A. Okay. If you need to. Um, zoom in on those graphs when you're doing the test. You can go ahead and zoom in. Which one is my 30 degree angle and a magnitude of 4? B is. Okay. Because if you would drop this down, that would drop right down to there. This is a 45 degree angle. So this would be a 30 degree angle. This would be 120. This would be 135. And obviously, 90 and 180. Those will be your different options. Find the magnitude and direction of that vector. What quadrant am I in? Negative 1, negative 3? Three? 3. Quadrant 3. So, magnitude equals the square root of each of them squared. So, negative 1 squared plus negative 3 squared which equals 1 plus 9, or the square root of 10. They say, use an exact answer using radicals as needed, so we want to type in the square root of 10 there. To find the direction, it's the inverse tangent, and you use the positive numbers, and you go b over a, or y over x. So it would be 3 over 1. What's the inverse tangent of 3 over 1? No. Okay, so to the nearest one decimal place, 71.6. All right, so we're in quadrant three. This is our reference angle, not our angle. That's our reference angle. So if we're in quadrant three, it's down here somewhere. What do we do with this 71.6? Add it to 180, because 180 is a horizontal line. We add it to that. So 180 plus 71.6 is 251.6. Okay, that's the process. And finally, two prospectors. Of course, I'm going to put the donkey problem on the test. It's my most favoritist problem of all time in trigonometry class. So if this is a 25 degree angle, which are, these prospectors are getting smarter because yesterday was a 30, or Tuesday was a 30 degree angle. Well, this, if they go a little tighter together, they, they get a little more leverage. So 25 degrees is better. So if this is 25 degrees, what's this angle up here? Where this guy is. What's this angle between these two lines of this parallelogram? 155. And now we have side, angle, side. And we're trying to figure out the force going in a straight line this way because the donkey is pulling back at an equal and opposite force that way. So, if we have side angle side, we can find this. So, we take 55 squared plus 70 squared minus 2 times 55 times 70 cosine of 155 degrees. So, 55, 55 squared plus 70 squared minus 2 times 55 times 70 cosine of 155 degrees. That's a lot of force. 14,903 pounds of force? 
got to do the square root of it. Second square root of the answer. 122.1 pounds of force, which makes sense because 70 plus 55 is 125 pounds of force. If they'd be going in a straight line, they'd be going that 125 pounds. Well, because they're a little angle in between them, they're uh, reducing that down to 122.1 pounds of force. Okay, so I will put out a practice test out there for you to do today. And then I'll decide what we're doing tomorrow.